based upon the the uh, past uh, 20 or 30 year study, the shoreline uh, eroded almost every one acre a year per, per year. So why is that important if you think about the, the wetland being keep eroding and eroding? People like this area, they, they feel like the wetland uh, disappeared. We found there are some correlations of the water levels, but it's not always true. It's one thing. The second thing is that uh, we found that when the wind is stronger, the wave motion can uh, somehow affect the shoreline, particularly erode the shoreline. So city, I think around 2000, 2000, they start the restoration plans. So you can see the Americans and try, uh, try to uh, put the vegetation back on the shoreline. They were successful in some area, but they were never successful in this area and this area either. And the main reason is that if you can see the wind blowing from the south, in general, the whole annual wind field is from the southwest. And this area turned out to be the strongest patch, longest patch. So wave here is the largest and the wave hit the shoreline and so the vegetation, every time they grow it, the vegetation never survives. We would like to install some of the structure, but the structure need to be very environmental friendly, particularly suit for the site. And we call it a floating bark because this site has been claimed as a floating bark itself. And so the, at the behind of the structure, that the, the wave field will be a, a smaller. And the other functions of the FBI is, as you can see in the field, that the, at the behind, that once they're being a wave, you also accumulate the sediment. So uh, the sediments being accumulated, the vegetation can start to grow, and then we will start to keep going, going to outward by itself. And so they, we call this kind of thing called restoring engineering, that uh, restore all of the things that back to the original system. We are deploying the uh, floating bark interceptors to, to the field, that uh, expanding from the original 20 of them to the 40. In order to see how effective it is, uh, we will continue need to monitor the wave field and also particular and the bottom topographies and also the shoreline and we put the cameras lap, time lapse camera keep monitoring the shoreline behavior. So we use treated wood, treated lumber for all the sides. It's a couple different two by fours, two by sixes, uh, a couple different sizes, and that's pretty much all. And then we wrapped it in this coconut mesh uh, erosion blanket. Uh, to, so it can hold the dirt and soil and plants later. And uh, then we added these protectors on the side to sort of catch more sediment. Uh, they took me about two weeks, two and a half weeks to make. And part of it was learning the best method to do them. I feel like if we did it again, I could probably make it in about a week. So we'll drop them in and we'll attach them in groups of four. So we'll have two anchors on each of the outside ones and then one anchor on each of the middle ones and then we'll attach each FBI to one another so that they stay uh, together better. And so we'll have 20 of them, so we'll put five groups of four uh, down and then fill them with soil today, and then we'll add plants at a later date. So, in short, that uh, I believe the success of this kind of projects that uh, to um, make it a long-term uh, commitment is uh, with the community involved. As a uh, Wisconsin Badger, one thing that we always keep in our minds is that uh, we would like to have this kind of called Wisconsin idea. That uh, not only from a university perspective, that the, all of this idea that we need to help each other out to build a very strong community. And that's what the spirit of the Badger. <laughs>